Well, hey, my friend, I'm so glad that you're with me on the podcast today. I have one of the probably most special guests that I've ever had the privilege of having on the podcast, over 200 something episodes. And I don't think I've ever had anybody from my hometown who has known me my whole life. And before I was born, Adeline Scott yeah. is here. Adeline, I'm so glad you're here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> Thank you. I'm excited. I know it. Thank I know it. I was I was telling Tanya as we were getting ready, I said, Lord, I said, it's it's dangerous having people that have known you your whole life now on the on the podcast because they can start telling crazy stories about you. <laughs> I will not tell everything I know about you. I promise. <laughs> but it's probably more than a lot of people would know. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, Adeline, you for those folks who don't know you and uh and that sort of thing, give everybody kind of a thumbnail sketch of, of who you are, where you are in the world, and, and what you do creatively these days. Well, I've been a, a musician all my life. I started playing the piano at like age four and pursued my music career. I got a degree, two degrees in piano. Uh, but later on in life, I discovered I needed to act, make an actual living. So I became <laughs> a school teacher and I taught school for 21 years. Um, I retired about 10 years ago from school teaching, and right away, uh, I thought, well, what am I going to do today? Uh, so I have a real interest in art, though I'd never drawn or painted or done anything like right. that. And so I began looking into some things and took a drawing class and thought, oh, this is interesting. Um, and Seven years ago, um, I had some real trauma in my life, tragedy in my life. I lost my older son. My, he was my youngest son, actually, yeah. James. He was 45. Yeah. Died suddenly of a heart attack. And a few, a few weeks later, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. And so I was reeling from side to side and staring into space. And... I decided I would draw a picture of him just to remember an expression in his eyes. And I thought, wow, this is really comforting to do this. It makes me feel close to him. Yeah. And had you ever done that before? I mean, previously? I mean, no. Yeah. No. And so I thought, well, I need to stay in this room more and do some more artistic things because it took me out of my left brain. Yeah where I was reeling from events and put me into my right brain, right, which is my best brain. <laughs> I would agree. Ask, I would agree. <laughs> ask my husband. It is my best brain. I love and that. so um, it was just a place of comfort for me. Yeah. And of course, you know, God leads us in mysterious ways sometimes. And so I've just been in this world meeting new people, interesting people. Yeah. I had known musicians all my life and teachers, but not artists. And so I've been, I've attended many workshops. Uh, I paint in several different mediums. Right. And I love them all. Uh, of course, the finger painting really pushed me over the edge. And I'll tell yeah, you more about that. The, it's been so interesting for me to, to watch your story unfold you know over the 47 years that i've i've known you um I, and for for those of you know who are just getting to know adeline on the on the podcast today she's uh you know i'll say glossing over her incredible music career adeline is a i mean you are a world-class pianist and organist and i mean oh I, thank you my goodness i mean there's there's nobody better and i just it's so interesting for me to see how people's creative expression changes over their life because you know what you did all those years musically and that sort of thing was yes very creative but also had a very left brain part to that you know as well the the technicality and the you know precision uh, through which you play and that sort of thing and now to see you over here uh in finger painting and pushing color around and and all that sort of thing how is that does that make your brain hurt or is that <laughs> are you well, reconciling actually, that together or how does that what is that well the thing that is this sh short walk yeah from music to art because there's so many basic concepts that yeah. are the same like color value 
line, repetition, yeah. repetition, repetition, shape, and all of the things that I've been doing all my life in music. Now I'm doing them in art. Yeah. And they're very important elements of both of those disciplines. And so it's, it's like when you were in kindergarten and you're putting your hands all in the paint and smearing it on your neighbors. Right. <laughs> but it was just so much fun. And it's therapeutic to touch the paint. And so when you do finger painting, you wear a glove so the paint doesn't contaminate your skin, right. but you're touching. It's a tactile thing. And yeah. then it sets your brain into motion. And it's just a, a really wonderful feeling to do that. Just like sitting down to play a piece on the piano. Yeah, yeah. It's interesting to me just, you know, because you come from that musical background, your brain automatically is looking for structure, even in the chaos, even in the spontaneity and that sort of thing. Do you, It seems like just from hearing you talk that that knowing that there is structure in what most people think is just spontaneous creativity, knowing that there's structure kind of helps you get a handle on painting maybe a little bit quicker than than others do. I mean, is that a fair assessment or? It, it could be that your yeah. concept is quickened um, and you just uh, start with fundamentals. And, yeah. and I spent several years on that. It's just like playing the piano. You've got to start by learning your scales, sure. arpeggios, how to read the music and those sorts of things. So in art, the same thing in learning to do shading. Uh, to do positive space, negative space, um, you, how the colors are mixed. It, there's a whole world of fundamentals of art. Yeah. And you've got to know some of that before you can strike out and try to paint an apple or whatever yeah, it absolutely. is. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's so the, I love it. In Exodus 31, you know, it talks that it says that Bezalel was both filled with the Spirit of God and skilled in every manner of workmanship. And it's like, it's both, right? I mean, you got to have that inspiration, uh, but also you got to have the skill that enlarges your capacity to, to do the thing that, that you're imagining, right? Well, I, you know, you can't ever practice your scales too much. That's Matthew, right. <laughs> and you cannot vocalize too much and you cannot practice the fundamentals of art too much. Yeah. It, one thing builds on another. And so I just, found a new love in my life, a new passion. Yeah. And it's very exciting because I can be my own boss. I don't have to report to the principal. Well, now let me pause right there because I, I just want to say this. Um, uh, you are transitioning. So out of this professional life, musically teaching all this sort of thing, um, you're over 40. Um, so this is a, this is just a, barely. Just I'm forty one. Yeah, yeah, yeah forty one. Thank That's you. I right. bless the Lord. But she, <laughs> so you're you're in a season of life where a lot of people are slowing down, using the big R word, retirement, and that sort of thing. And yet, I just as I've watched you over the years on Facebook, I'm like, and really the impetus for this this interview, um, I saw you not only starting to sell your work, but then you started teaching. And then the other day, I got an invitation to a Facebook group that you're putting together for your students and all that. I said, look at Adeline. I said, she is just killing it. I mean, this is, you're really going <laughs> after it. And so are, it seems like you're really enjoying not only doing this yourself, but also sharing this and, uh, you know, doing this as a um, side income or primary part of your income now. How does how does that look and how are you leaning into well, that? Well, I if I buy if I sell a painting, then I place a big order for supplies. <laughs> so I'm supporting my habit. Yes, yes. And that's about it. But uh you as you look back on what you've already done, like I did so many years of lesson plans for teaching. Right. It's like falling off the log for me to do a lesson plan for painting a picture. Yeah, sure, sure. It's just so closely related. And, uh, you know, I watch what you do, too, with your weaving and your kudzu. And I think, who would have thought of that? But somebody like Matthew <laughs> Tommy. <laughs> what if ever, right? There you go. I remember the first time Mama used to tell this story. Uh, the first time I started weaving kudzu that she knew about, I was home from college. Uh, when she lived over there uh, in 
where she, you know, her house was and uh, had that big front porch. And I had a whole bunch of kudzu in the back of my car or something and drug it all up on her porch. And she was like, what in the world are you doing? And again, who would have thought all these years later, the Smithsonian and commissions and all of this, this stuff, but it all starts somewhere, doesn't it? So, it's got to begin, you know, right. you get a vision and you don't, might not know where you're going, but you're swimming across the river. You know, you're going to make it somewhere. Right. You're not going right. to drown. <laughs> Talk about, you know, Adeline, one of the things that I'm really passionate about helping people in our mentoring program and all this is defining success for themselves in the season of life that they're in. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you're in a different stage of life than I'm in, you know, the last 10 years, my focus has been on, you know, full time, eight to 10 hours a day in the studio, selling, building a business, all that sort of thing. But success for the season that you're in is not that, you know, and not at that pace, it's a different rhythm. Uh, How are you setting a, a pace of life and expectations for yourself that that makes sense for you and your husband and, and your family um, so that you can well, do your art, but it's not taking over your life. It does kind of take over my life. I have, <laughs> I have paintings in my husband's bathtub. <laughs> I mean, it's what I do, though, Matt, Matt, is I took our spare bedroom and turned it into a studio. And I've worked at getting things placed in my studio for several years. And finally now I have it so that all of my mediums are in one room, but they're easy to move. If Mm. I want to do an oil painting with brushes, I know the several pieces and containers that I need to put on my work table. Right. And then if I switch to watercolor, I've got it contained in a little cabinet here. Right. Um, I have all my papers in one place that I paint on. I have canvases. Well, actually, I have canvases in the basement, too, but um, (laughs) they're they're everywhere. Um, I have a small gallery in my den with my favorite paintings there. And if somebody wants to come buy a painting, they can come see my work. They can do a commission. They say, I want a picture this big. I want flowers. I want uh, this and that and portraits. I've done a few portraits though. I think that's the hardest thing there is to do. Everything you ever thought about knowing is pulled into painting a portrait. Mm. And so it's just fascinating to me. And I, I could come in my studio and out of my studio anytime during the day. I don't have to travel to another place. Right. So one important thing, if you're going to do a hobby or jewelry making or or art or any other thing, you need a space. Yeah. Even if it's a closet. Right. And you can put everything in the closet and close the door and pull it out when it's time. Don't you think that for you and for other people in your life, I mean, that kind of draws a line in the sand and says, this is important. This is something worth focusing on. I'm worth in, I'm worth focusing on. I mean, oh yes, it does give you a sense of accomplishment. And at first, I didn't have much confidence in what I was doing, and I because I thought I had to be as good as uh, Michelangelo, right? Of course. Or I needed to just burn my brushes. <laughs> and then I learned that you you do the best you can do. Yeah. And I want to be the best that I can be with my ability as such it is. I mean, I'm around people who have 40 and 50 years worth of career time in painting, and right. I'm not going to paint like them. Right. I, I can't. There's there's not enough time left. I'd be 112 before <laughs> I could do it. So I just paint to my enjoyment and, and to what I think looks good, and I can look at a painting and say that painting is not making me happy yet yeah yeah I don't like those colors I don't like it's like reading a book you say that place over there and that painting needs something else some other colors and you just have to and I have one outstanding rule about what color to use Mm, what's that you put colors on your painting until you like them (laughs) <laughs> and it works. I love it. If you don't like it, then why are you doing it? 
that's the same thing people would say to me with these big wall sculptures I do. How do you know it's done? I'm like, I, that's the artist, right? That's the the intuition of when it sings to you, when it's like, you know, you know, when, yeah. it's done, when it gives you joy. You, do. So, you yeah. really do. Yeah, I love that. You know, Adeline, there's so many people, I think, listening. We, we're we now, I think, last time I checked, um, over 60 countries all over the world that are listening to the podcast and thousands of people that are, are tuning in. And I know that so many of them are, in the stage or approaching the stage of life that that you're in and trying to determine what success looks for like for them. And even considering, gosh, is it too late for me to be able to pick up something brand new? And yet, what would you say to them just to encourage them to, to keep moving on their journey creatively? It's never too late. Hmm. You can paint something on your last day. Yeah. Because yeah. a very famous artist named, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, Edward Manet, uh, not Monet, but Manet, yeah. on his deathbed, painted 14 of the most outstanding still life flower paintings because wow. every time somebody would come to visit him, he would paint wow. and he painted from his bed. Wow. Um, and it's just never too late. And, you know, I look for words of encouragement in the Bible, which is probably not the right way to do it. You don't want the Bible to try to fit what you want it to fit. Right. But, you know, as I read, uh, especially Psalm 23, yeah, I see words like um, God is our quiet brook of bliss. Mm. And so if you feel bliss and peace when you're doing something, do it some more. That's right. That's right. It, it's a resting place, a delicious feast. It's a pathway to God's pleasure. And also in the first Psalm, I saw that God embraces my pathways. Yeah, that's so and good. So I pray that he will embrace this pathway of mine. I'm not trying to make history or do anything of that nature, I'm trying to survive. Mm. And it feeds my soul to do these things. Yeah. Well, and I think so for all of us, as we, I love that quote by St. Irenaeus, one of the early church fathers, it said, uh, the glory of God is man fully alive. And it's like, as we do that thing that makes us come alive, that thing that God put in us, this beautiful creative expression, it draws us closer to the Lord. It, it you know, glorifies him and I think it's just a, it's a beautiful way to live life. And whether that is as a hobby, as a part-time income, or if it's just to keep your habit sustained and, <laughs> and keep you in art supplies or, or whatever it is, what, what more beautiful life could we be living than, than that? Right. Well, that's exactly right. And I even lately thought um, I'd like to learn calligraphy. Yeah. And so I've been into a little bit of handwriting, uh, other options for handwriting and um that's very interesting too you don't have to go anywhere you don't have to you have need a pen and a piece of copy paper to get started that's right. where i started yeah yeah it's just getting started i think for so many people is the they let the mind games of oh i'm not or i can't or all this kind of thing and yet you just got to get started you just got to get on the journey and allow it to unfold as you do and i'd I love that about what you're doing. Yeah. Pick up a pencil and piece of paper and, and scribble. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, listen, I, I mentioned that you are also helping others do this uh, through your classes. You've got a new Facebook group where you're gathering folks that are interested in, in what you're doing and that sort of thing. So where is the best place that folks can connect with you if they want to find out more about what you're doing and see your work and classes and all that kind of thing? Well, they need to spell my name, A-D-L-E-Y-N, awesome. Scott, on Facebook, which I have a regular profile page, like everybody. Yeah. But then I have a group about finger painting, and it's okay. just simply finger painting with Adeline. Awesome. And if they will join the group, then they can go in and see the things that are being posted. They can post on the page. Love it. Please, if they know an artist. Uh, especially a finger painting artist, please ask them to post something on my page. And I have tons of information already on the page, but I, every day I continue to put other little tidbits about how to get started yeah. 
and doing this. Well, I love it. Well, you're not only dear to my heart, you're an inspiration to to so many. And um, I just love that in this season of your life, you are just going after it full bore. And uh, it's awesome to see. So, Well, I can't wait to see what you're going to use to make baskets when you get my age. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. it cannot, you, you can't make it out of marijuana. It will not That's work. Right. <laughs> I told Tammy the other day, I saw these things on um, on Facebook, it was like this burial pod that, you know, instead of being buried in a casket, they put you in a pod and there's a, a tree comes out of it. So you'd be like, you know, you, you no, uh-uh. to a tree. And I told her, I said, I said, listen, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the Matt Tommy Memorial kudzu patch. I'm going to have them put me in a, <laughs> in a pod with a, with a kudzu root and let a, uh, let kudzu take over the whole thing. And so, why not? Be That's a beautiful thought. I would like to be uh, in your patch of kudzu. Exactly. Exactly. I love it. Well, Adeline, thank you so much for being on. And um, everybody, be sure to uh, visit Adeline's website. We'll put a link in the show notes for you on that and also to her Facebook group. And, and you can connect with her um, just for more information on all the good things that she's doing. So, Adeline, thank thanks for you, being on Matt. today. I was so thankful to hear from you about this and to be able to share anything that would help another person to to be inspired. Absolutely. Thanks. Thank you, Matt.